Good morning, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Katie Earl. I work for the Erie County Department of Senior Services, and we're joined here with Caitlin and Kendra from Deaf Access Services. We're so excited that they're here with us this morning. Do want to let you know that you can turn on closed captions if you want. If you're on a computer at the lower left hand side of your screen, you'll see the bubble with the double C. You can access that there. Or if you're on a tablet or a smartphone, touch your screen, hit that circle with three dots, and then I believe closed captions are there. I'm still getting used to it, so forgive me for not knowing exactly how that works. But anyways, we're happy for the accessibility here. A quick thank you to our sponsors, which is our Department of Senior Services, Highmark Blue Cross Blue Shield of Western New York, Excelsior Orthopedics, and Wegmans for all of their support. And if you ever need anything, please do not hesitate to contact Senior Services. We will help you out however we can, and if we don't have the answer, we will help you find it. So I'm excited to introduce our speaker today, Caitlin. Caitlin Custer has been working with Deaf Access Services for two years as an AmeriCorps member. She's been teaching ASL to the community and she teaches at primary hall to kindergartners and first graders. She's born and raised in Buffalo. She is deaf with four brothers and her oldest brother is deaf as well. She graduated from Sweet Home High School and pursued her associate's degree in liberal arts at Rochester Institute of Technology. She's played four years of college softball and she also plays on the National Women's Deaf Ice Hockey Team. Super excited to have her here today. Along with Kendra, I will turn it over. Thank you guys. Hello everyone. I'm so happy to see you all here. Okay, so I guess we'll go ahead and start now with the first slide. Go ahead. That's the third slide. I need the first one. Next, please. <laughs> Okay, fine. <laughs> okay, so understanding deaf culture. Um, it's not only just like hearing loss, um, it's people in the deaf community, we have shared experiences. Um, they're, you know, it's the same as like with the hearing world. There's so many different types of people, but the, you know, and it's huge, but in the deaf world, it's very small, right? There's not many deaf people compared to like the hearing world. And, you know, we just have deaf access services. So this company, Deaf Access Services started in 1983. It was first called Deaf Adult Services, and then in 2014, it was changed to Deaf Access Services. <clears throat> We're the only nonprofit in Western New York that focuses on services for the deaf and hard of hearing community. That kind of just summarizes DAS in a nutshell. Next, please. Okay, so we can start with the very first letter of the alphabet. And that is how you sign the letter A. That's good. Next. B. Make sure your thumb is in front. Next. C. Next. D. E. Make sure you like bend your fingers. Next. 
Next, please. There. F. <clears throat> G. H. J, same as I, but you just kind of like draw the letter J in the air. K. That's a little hard. L, same as like when you draw the letter L, for the capital mm -hmm. M. So the thumb is on top of your pinky and underneath the other three fingers, M. And then same as M, but only two fingers on top, N. O. Mm -hmm. P, same as a K, but down. Q. R. I was like, fingers crossed, <laughs> R. S. Like a fist. T. T, like got your nose, T. U. V. V. W. X. Y, and then Z. Okay, so that was the alphabet. And now we'll start with the numbers, one through 10. One, to start, one, <laughs> two, Three. No, it's not three or three. No, it's three with your thumb out. Four. Five. Six. Thumb and pinky touch, six. Seven. Just moves to your ring finger. Eight. Nine. Same as the letter F, number nine. Mm-hmm. And then 10, 10 shakes, thumbs up, and then you kind of wiggle it or shake it, 10.
Great job. So first word that you're going to learn I'm going to teach you today is yes. So it's the letter S and it nods. It's like a head nod with your hand, yes. Good. No. So those three fingers, and they touch, no. Are they gonna tap? Thank you. Thank you. Name. Name. So your pointer in middle. So now you can say, my name is. And then you finger spell your name. Name. So it taps. Mm -hmm. <laughs> my favorite sign and phrase. So you use your middle fingers and you say, what's up? <laughs> what's up? <laughs> so it kind of like flicks off your chest. Sometimes you can just use one finger too, like what's up, or you can use both. I teach that to the kids um, at the school and they love that sign. They're constantly, what's up, what's up? <laughs> Their bathroom, it's a T, bathroom. You just kind of shake the T back and forth, bathroom. Drink. So it's the C shape for like a cup, like you're holding a cup and you make the motion of taking a drink from the cup, drink. Eat. So you close your hands or your fingers and to your mouth, like the food's going in, eat. So you can learn family signs now. Mother on your chin, like mother or mom. So from the cheek down are feminine or female signs. And from the cheek up or like the cheekbone or nose up is like male signs. So on the chin is female, so mother. So father. So grandpa, same as father, but it comes out twice. And then there's grandma or grandmother, same as mom or mother but it comes out twice. Okay, so brother, this is because that's the same for boy, because it's the because it's the male, so brother, and then it comes down onto your hand. It kind of means like boy same, like brother. So then that's a girl on the chin, because that's the female area of, of sign language. So sister. So same, so girl, because it's the bottom of the face. So it's like girl, baby, daughter. Mm -hmm. Daughter. And then boy, baby is son. Hot. Like, oh, if you're feeling hot or something's hot, hot. Goes away from the mouth. Hot, it's cold. Like you're sh like you're shivering. Like brr, cold. Does your hand shake. Cold. Wind. Like outside is windy. Like like that's the motion that the air would make of the breeze. Wet. It's like soaked in water's wet. Wet. Rain. Those are like the raindrops coming down from the clouds, right? Rain. C 
clouds. Clouds. Mm -hmm. It's like rain, but it goes white and then like, like it, um, like flurries. It's not like hard, like the rain coming down because snow, you know, is soft, right? Mm -hmm. Kind of floats. Sun. So it's around and down, like the circle and then the rays coming down. Sun. Clothing. Now we can do some clothing signs. First, shirt. So easy. You just kind of grab your shirt. Like, this is what it is. It's a shirt. <laughs> it's a shirt. Shorts. Can I show where they cut off on your like shorts? Mm -hmm. Shoes. So two S's. Shoes. If you have on boots, then it's with the letter B. And they tap boots, shoes, boots. Mm -hmm. Coat, coat like you're putting it on coat. Glasses. Hat. Hat. Socks. It's your number one socks. They kind of brush each other. Gloves. Gloves. I love you. So I, L, Y, and you put them together and it makes I love you. So we can repeat and review some things. A to Z. We can do whatever, whatever the audience likes and whatever you would like to do, Caitlin, this is awesome. Do you wanna review or practice? Can you do a few simple phrases? Sure. Any phrase? Is there something you want to learn for today? I'm not seeing any questions in the chat, but I know that somebody, Teresa, I think you said yes. So we'd like some for view too. <laughs> okay, perfect. So this is how. So your hands kind of roll off each other. How are the number one off your chin are, and then you point you. So in ASL, we just like we don't sign the, the, the whole sentence. We kind of simply just sign, how are you? It's just kind of like how you. Like we don't have to sign the how are you, which is kind of like how are you how you would be more ASL. How you. Mm -hmm. If you're asking about the weather outside. How weather outside outside cold hot windy if you are looking for something um, you can say where it's the number one and it shakes where be like, where are my glasses, shoes, socks? Mm -hmm.
other phrases that you want to learn? We have help in the chat. Help? Like if you need someone to help you, it goes towards you because you want the help for yourself. Or if you want to help someone, then you would like point to or like take it out to that person. So it's either help me or help you. It's directional. Mm -hmm. uh, what about nice to meet you? Oh, that's a good one. Okay, so this is nice. Meet. So these show like your people. Those are like the persons. So like nice, meet, you. Like you're, you don't sign like nice to meet you. It's just nice, meet, you. Mm -hmm. Nice, meet, you. And then next you could say, my name is, how many people here today, uh, I don't know, maybe you guys could take turns like practicing, maybe fingerspelling your name, if you'd like to learn to do that. Uh, somebody messaged me, yes, definitely. Okay. Yes, yeah, so it's it's hard to see the people. I wish um, I could help you fingerspell your name, like each of you. Um, so if there's someone who wants to go first, um, I can help you know, fingerspell your name. Kitty is going to go back uh, to the beginning of the alphabet. She's the one that's in control of the slides. Um, Teresa, okay. it looks like you're spelling your name. Would you want to work with Caitlin? Let me unmute you, Teresa. I took a class many years ago, so I'm, I'm just trying to remember, but Teresa is T. Do you put your hand like this so that they can see, or does it matter? Oh, I can't. We can't see you. <laughs> T H E R E S A A. Mm -hmm. My name e. is T H E R E S A R. R. Mm -hmm. T H E. There's E S. No, A. Yeah. yeah. So T H E R E S A. There you go. Yes, I got it. T H E E S A. And then H is in front of you, it goes straight across. No, it's in front of you. No, turn your hand oh. around. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. T H E R E S A. I have the some of the ASL signs and like they'll show, you know, in the pictures that the hand is out. It's just kind of like showing you the shape so you know how to like 
put your fingers on the inside, but it should be in front of you. Mm -hmm. Same with S. Mm -hmm, that was fine. Um, same like G, but it shows you like out to the side, but it's supposed to be in, in front of you. It, it's confusing. Pictures are confusing. Great. Perfect. Thank you. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, Teresa. I wish I could see everyone. <laughs> but good job. <laughs> Sorry, Teresa, I had muted you. What did you say? Good job. What was that again? Good. Good. Job. Good job. Good job. Or you could fingerspell good job. Good job. Mm -hmm. But it's the same work or job. Mm -hmm. Wow. Good job. How about Merry Christmas? Same as happy. It's like Mary and then Christmas. It's a C and it, it just kind of goes in an arc. Like Merry Christmas, like happy Christmas. I'm wondering. Merry Christmas. Nope, go ahead. Does it matter if you're signing with one hand, which hand you sign with, or is it okay to use your dominant hand for one? Yeah, use your, yeah, use your dominant hand. Mm -hmm. Like, so there are some signs that use both sign or hands. Some you only just use one hand. So then you would always just use your dominant hand for that. Mm hmm Thank you. Sure. I can teach you the different holiday signs, right? Since, I mean, you just learned Merry Christmas. There's more. Does anyone interested in that? That would be great. Okay, so Easter. So you have the Easter, the E's that go like in little circles. We use that because that's a sign for Sunday. And Easter is always on a Sunday. So Easter. So happy Easter. Easter. Christmas. Christmas. And then there's New Year's. So there's always the happy. And then new. Year. Year. Mm -hmm. Your S's that make the circle. Mm -hmm. Happy new year. The next one would be happy birthday. <laughs> Same as that what's up sign or shape. So the middle finger touches your chin and goes down to like your heart or like your chest. Mm -hmm. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. The very old sign would be like birthday, the actual sign for like birthing a baby and then die. Like birthday, like birthing day, like happy birthing day. But yeah, that's that's all that's been changed to birthday. Mm -hmm. Some signs change, like from the old fashioned signs, and then they change and they have new signs. More modern, I suppose. This is Valentine's Day. So you same with your middle fingers and you make you draw like a heart on your chest. So it's like happy heart day, happy Valentine's Day. Mm-hmm. Valentine's Day. Yeah. And then this is Halloween. So your C's, 
So like happy Halloween. Halloween. Be Halloween. Happy. Let's see what would be next. Um, oh, Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. It makes it's like the same as like no, but it kind of like goes to your chest. So Thanksgiving. Because that's the sign for turkey. So it kind of comes from turkey, like the like the waddle on the turkey's beak, right? So that's turkey. So then it goes turkey or like Thanksgiving. So happy Thanksgiving. Yeah, that you just kind of have to figure out. So that means fourth. And then you spell the month July. You have to spell that. Mm -hmm. Some words, um, a lot of them in English vocabulary, you know, have to be or can be finger spelled. Not every word has a sign. Someone was wondering if we could go through the numbers again, if that would be okay. Yeah, yeah, sure. One. Two. Three. You got to remember that it's not like you're used to three. It's three with your thumb out. Mm -hmm. Four. Five. Six. If your thumb t touches your pinky. Mm -hmm. Six. Seven, yeah, we'll go over to your ring finger, seven. Eight, then you move to your middle finger. And then nine goes to your pointer. It helps you remember that you just, you start with your pinky and then just kind of like tap each finger, go in order, six, seven, eight, nine. Mm-hmm. And then 10, shake, shake your thumbs up, 10. That was great, thank you so much. Of course, no problem. Other words that you wanted to learn today? You guys can unmute yourself or put it in the chat. I was just kind of wondering who invented uh, sign language or who decides that a word should be changed. That is a good question. <laughs> good question. Okay, so honestly, ASL um, isn't a universal language. It is not the same everywhere. Like there's accents, quote unquote. Um, so suppose a deaf person from out west, like a western state, meets me, we're going to have different signs, same meaning, but different signs. It's like accents, right? <clears throat> it, it's, it's interesting, right? And I'm not sure who invented sign, but that is a very good question. I know um, it was invented a long time ago, 17 countries, and it started as like a visual language. It wasn't called ASL. It was called visual gestures, and it's changed over time. There was like a French guy um, 
Francis Diaby or something. Mm -hmm. I guess I should research that. I should know, right? Jeez. <laughs> That's fine. It's interesting that it's different depending on your region or your accent. Mm hmm. Yep. I'm wondering what it's like teaching the kindergartners. Oh, <laughs> some good days, some difficult days. I mean, they're kids, right? There's no stability. Um, and I teach the hearing kids. So, um, I mean, I think it gives them good access to visual thing. It helps them, you know, to have more than one language, um, to have ASL. And I'm thinking it's going to help improve their language skills. But I, they seem to enjoy it. They have fun, you know, but some, I think, are just really tired of it and they just don't want to sign anymore. <laughs> I mean, they're kids, right? So what are you going to do? What do you expect? <laughs> but it's still fun and I do enjoy it. I've got a question, an interesting one. So technology, texting, cell phones, iPads. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming that's, a, you know, obviously a, it assists in nonverbal communication. Do you think that's the way of the future? Texting? Yes, but um, like using FaceTime too. If I want to call a deaf friend, mm -hmm. I can sign like through FaceTime. I can see their face to see them face to face. Yeah. I don't always just use texting. Mm -hmm. um, some deaf people can talk depending on their like range of hearing, their levels, things like that. Yeah. So it's, there's not just one type of deaf, deafness, right? Like we don't all have the same amount of hearing loss. Some can talk, some don't, some prefer just to sign, some prefer to sign and speak. There's, there's a huge variety. Kendra, I have a question for you. Um, obviously you're hearing, why did you learn how to sign? mind if I answer I just of course go ahead technically so I have to step out of my role as the interpreter um I I learned sign because my mother um used to work at deaf adult services back in 1988 or 1989 and my mother was an interpreter so she she taught me to sign I started signing when I was two and Caitlin actually used to be my student at um, St. Mary's School for the Deaf like many, many years ago. Um, so followed in my mother's footsteps and became an interpreter too. <laughs> how do you learn how to sign? Go to school for that, take classes. Um, they do offer degrees in ASL or degrees in interpreting. Where can you take the classes? So you can take ASL classes through us at Deaf Access Services, but if you want to become an interpreter or a teacher of the deaf, then you have to go to college. Let's see, there's Gallaudet University in Washington, DC. Um, there's RIT like Rochester Institute of Technology, they have an interpreting program. Kiyuka in the Finger Lakes that has an interpreting major as well. How do I sign up and where's the location of the classes? Oh, we, Deaf Access Services offers classes online. Um, and on our website, we have all the information um, for our ASL classes. I should have sent you guys a link as well. 
Um, who did I send it to? I sent it to probably Maria, Kathleen, or um, oh. or Katie, and I think maybe she could have sent the link to you. I can make sure that I pass the link around. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I, I can make sure that everybody's here gets the link and then my folks at Orchard Park, I'll make sure that Maria or Linda passes it along to you. Thank you very much. I mm -hmm. appreciate it. I want to learn sign language and I don't know how to do it. So, okay, great. Thank you. Awesome. Of course. Sure. Yeah, we have four levels, like levels one, two, three, and four. Um, so start with level one and you learn basics. Um, it's about 10 to 14 weeks and then you'll get a certificate for level one and then you can move on you know, to level two, so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. And most everything is online now because COVID's a thing, so. <laughs> That's wonderful information. Thank you guys. Sure. Any other questions? See, feel free to unmute or type it in the chat. Wait a couple seconds here. I have a quick question. Isn't the number two the same as the letter V? Yep, same as V, two and V, mm -hmm, it's the same. Okay. okay. Yep, F and nine, mm -hmm, six and W, mm -hmm. Oh, yes, yes. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Sure. Hi, um, I, I have a question from probably. Some signs are the same, right? They're similar. Yep. No, uh, my, my comment is when I was, more heavily involved in this, the, there was word that the state of New York might count signing as a second language for the teens who, the uh, senior high people who need two languages to graduate. How did, did that ever go anywhere? Is that something available to today's teenager? We're trying to encourage that some students would rather take, you know, ASL instead of Spanish or German yeah. or that. Like, we're really trying to encourage that some schools um, that I'm like the school I'm teaching at right now finally wants to offer ASL instead of other um, languages. So hopefully we can get, you know, other states to or other schools to do that as well. And that movement is just alive in New York State. Is there any national interest in in doing that in their public school system? Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah, I'm sure. Well, like Rochester, um, they have schools that have replaced um, you know, like foreign languages with ASL. Washington D.C. Um, New York just isn't quite there yet. Okay. <laughs> And California just passed that. Oh, they, they did? That, they, mm -hmm, that they, you can have oh. ASL as a foreign language. As an option. Wow, good for them. Mm -hmm. I... Yes, I agree. <laughs> mm -hmm. You want to talk anymore? Thank you. Sure. So when I mainstreamed in high school, I was the only deaf kid at, you know, a hearing school. I had friends um, that were taking, you know, foreign language, and I was the only one that was kind of like waved from it, right? Like I didn't have to take a foreign language. And this was, this was like 10, no, no, not 10 years, eight years ago. And I thought, well, why couldn't they just take you know, ASL, it would have been awesome if they would have had that, right? And then they could have learned to, to speak with me, but no luck.
We've got a couple thank you comments coming through. Oh, you're so welcome. Yeah. Let's give it a second here. If I can ask what it's like to be on the National Women's Staff Hockey Team, I would love to hear about that for a second, if there's anything else coming through. Sure. I mean, it's pretty awesome. <laughs> but I mean, it's tough right now because there's not a lot of women and especially like deaf women on the team. It's uh, U.S. and Canada. And I think there's one more in in Russia, not China. Yeah, Russia. Um, so, I mean, obviously we're not playing with Russia with what's going on right now. So now we just have Canada and U.S. So we're trying to encourage other women's deaf teams from other countries to play. But I mean, it's really tough for them because they don't have opportunities like we do. There's a men's deaf team. I mean, they've got over four countries that I'll play. Um, the women's deaf team is still kind of developing, quote unquote, right now, where we were the first team. So it's pretty cool. That's awesome. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. It, I mean, it's interesting, right? Because I'm the only deaf player on the team. The others are hard of hearing and they grew up oral, right? They, they, they don't know sign. They don't know signing. Like they, they spoke grow up. Um, they relied on what hearing they still had. So I'm the only one that uses sign language and I don't hear as well as they do. It's interesting. Fun fact, but it's still really cool. Yeah, I can imagine that. Thank you. No problem. Okay. I'm just seeing a couple more thank you. So before we close, I just want to let you know that part two will be next Tuesday, May 24th at 1030. So we'll be back and continue learning about this. So Caitlin, Kendra, thank you both so much. And to everyone who's on, thank you. I'll send out that information, if not later today, tomorrow. And I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming and learning with me.